Hi there. Now in this video what I want to do is show you how we derive the equation for the directrix and the coordinates of the focus of an ellipse. And in order to do that I'm assuming that you watched an earlier tutorial where I gave you this result here. But briefly it's the locus of a point P that moves in such a way that when you compare the distance P to a fixed point S, known as the focus, with the distance P to a fixed straight line, known as the directrix, in other words, PS to PM, if it equals a constant value, which lies between 0 and 1, we call that constant value E, which is known as the eccentricity, then P traces out in an ellipse. And so we need to be familiar with this definition in order to work out then the equation of the directrix and the coordinates of the focus. So if I take a general ellipse and P is any point on that ellipse where S is the focus and M is the perpendicular distance from P to the directrix then if I take a horizontal line passing through S, which is now perpendicular to the directrix, and let's say we label this point where the line crosses the directrix as the point D. Also, where the ellipse crosses this horizontal line at this point here and this point here, I'll label as A and A dash or A prime. Now if I take the midpoint of A-A, dash -A, let's just say it's there, and label that point as O, and draw a vertical line in, it will clearly split this in half. And this vertical line is now going to be the y-axis, and the horizontal line here becomes my x-axis. Now, if the distance between A dash and A is 2A, then marking that in, we're going to have a distance of A either side of the y-axis. And the distance A to D, I'm going to call L. Now, in order to find the equation of the directrix, we're going to need to know the length L. The equation will be X equals A plus L. So what we do is we turn to the ratio, that is that PS when compared to PM, I showed you was equal to a constant, E, called the eccentricity. And for an ellipse, E was a value between 0 and 1. If I multiply both sides by PM, we get that PS equals E times PM. Now, as P moves around the ellipse, it's going to pass through A and A dash. When it passes through A, P will be at A. Instead of PS equaling PM, it will be AS equals AD. So writing that in, we would therefore have that AS must equal E times AD, based on this result here. And it follows then that AS must be equal to E times AD, which is of length L. But when I look at the distance AS, I can express this as A minus the distance OS. So if I put that in, but AS equals A minus the distance OS. So therefore, if I take the right-hand side here, I've got A minus OS equals AS, which is E times L. Now in this equation, we've got two unknowns, OS and L. So I'm going to need to find another equation that contains OS and L. And we do that by considering the point A dash, when P is at A dash. When P is at A dash, M will be at D. So we'll have that A dash S must equal E times 
a dash d. So if I put that in, we've got also when p is at a dash, we have a dash s must equal e times a dash d. So therefore, what we've got is a dash s must equal e times a dash d. And a dash d is 2a plus l. So we've got e times all of 2a plus l. But I can express a dash s in terms of the distance os as being a plus os. So if we just say but a dash s equals a plus os, I can use that result now and substitute it into here. So we've therefore got a plus os equals, and expanding the bracket at the same time, gives me 2ae plus e times l. And I call this equation 2. Now I can eliminate os from these two equations if I just simply add them together. So we've got equation 1 plus equation 2. Adding them together gives me 2a equals 2ae plus 2el. And dividing through by 2 and rearranging to make l the subject, I therefore end up with l equaling a over e minus a. So now that I've got L, I can get the distance OD. So therefore, OD must be equal to A plus the L. So we've got OD equaling A plus A over E minus A, taking this result from above. And that gives us A over E. So we end up with the equation of the directrix here. Let's just put it in. The directrix has the equation x equals a over e. So I'll just put that in up here, that x equals a over e. Now I need to get the coordinates of the focus s here. So I need to work out that distance os. And clearly, I can just substitute my result that I've got for L from this equation here, which I'll number 3, into, say, equation 2. So if I substitute 3 into okay, equation 2, then what I get is A plus OS equals 2ae and then we've got plus e times l. e times l, l from 3 was a over e minus a. And if I expand out this bracket here and subtract a from both sides, I end up with os equaling 2ae plus a minus ae minus a. And this cleans up to give me OS equaling A times E. So from this, I can see that now that I've got OS, the coordinates of S must be AE for the X coordinate and the Y coordinate will be zero. So therefore, we've got the focus S will have coordinates AE zero. Now it doesn't end there because by the symmetry of the curve, I didn't have to take the focus, this point here, on the right-hand side of the y-axis. I could have equally taken it to be at this point here on the left-hand side. Okay, let me just call that S dash or S prime. And if that were the case, then the fixed line, the directrix, wouldn't have been over here. It would have been over this side. And so its equation would be the negative of what we have here. x would equal minus 
a over e. So what we have then is two directrices and if I put that in that the equations of the directrices they can be x equals plus or minus a divided by the eccentricity e. And as for the focus we've got two foci. Okay, so what we've got is that the foci can be at S and S dash. In other words, they can be at plus or minus AE zero. So it's important that you remember these results here because you're going to be using them in further questions. If you should have to derive these results, then hopefully this has been of some use to you.